What's good, family? What's good? Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes. So look, let's get a bar. I want to go ahead and double back on some history, man. Some true history and facts that we cannot deny centered around Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, I know a lot of brothers and sisters about to partake in this wicked, sadistic, heinous holiday. Um, A couple of days from now, on Thursday, everybody going to get turkey, gobble, gobble, this and that, stuff and all that, right? Well, let me give you a little history. Let me give a back door, a little bit of history on it, you know what I mean? Um, That you should know. I think you should know, right, before you partake in this day, right? Hold your horses and get a bar and really, really, you know, dive into this history, man. If you got ears to hear, listen up, right? There's an Indian Removal Act, which I'm going to read a little bit right here in this introduction. This is a government website, by the way, right? Dot .gov, as you can see, dot .gov, right? So this, you can't hide this. This is this, There's a policy submitted as uh, uh, United States law and policy where they have in, in act where they remove Indians, right, the indigenous people of this land, from their ancestral homelands to more uh, less attractive, uncultivated lands, forcefully, right? Not acts like they were forcefully removed, right? And you see now the modern day version of the diasporas that they do now, which is a little more, you know, trickery and treachery, which is uh, giving you vouchers to move out to like Lancaster and Palmdale and stuff like that. And so they can plot on the lands that they want here in LA, right? which is gentrification, which is a whole, which is a more systemic di diaspora, right? Which is a whole nother uh, conversation. Nevertheless, right? Esau, AKA the so-called white man doing the same thing that they always did, right? So let's get a bar, right? Let's go into this history. The Indian Removal Act was signed into law by President Andrew Jackson on May 28, 1830, authorizing the president to grant lands west of the Mississippi in exchange for Indians' lands within existing state borders. A few tribes went peacefully, but many resisted the relocation policy. During the fall and winter of 1838 and 1839, the Cherokees were forcibly, right? I want to highlight that. Forcibly, right? Moved west by the United States government. Approximately 4,000 Cherokees died on this forced march, which became known as the Trail of Tears, right? Which you can look up the Trail of Tears, which is a real thing. Really, really, really sadistic, wicked things happen to the Native American Indian men and women by these white colonists, as they like to call themselves. They want to disguise themselves under the word colonists, which simply translates to thieves, sadistic, heinous thieves who killed and robbed and murdered millions of people and took a land that was not theirs, right? So this is a central thesis in um, policy that kind of embodies um, Thanksgiving, right? Because these white colonists or white settlers, as they like to call themselves, felt like their gods gave them power over the indigenous people. And as a result, they're thankful that they have this rich land. God bless America, right? <laughs> Sounds familiar? All right. Let's get some more, man. Let's get a let's get a map. Let's get a bar of the map, right? So y'all can kind of get a bar of how far these brothers have to walk, man. Look at this, <laughs> right? See Florida, right? They had to walk from Florida all the way over here. Look at this. All the way over here. My bad. Look at this. Lord in Christ, man walk man this is a far drive man this is a far airplane ride nevertheless they had to walk on foot from florida these seminole indians they had to walk on foot from florida all the way over here to less attractive uncultivated lands man forcibly right so this you know this i just want to kind of give y'all a visual of what was going on during these times right so this act centrals and embodies and encompasses things killing, right? Because shortly after that, let's see. Let me see. Is this it? Yeah, Lincoln and Thanksgiving. So Lincoln made it a law that we have to celebrate Thanksgiving in October. Here we go right here. October 3rd, 1863, President Lincoln issued a proclamation and said, look, the last Thursday of the month of November, we're going to celebrate Thanks killing, man. 
And then you can see in his proclamation, which I'm not going to read all this, he got into the whole aspects of how he felt like they're almighty gods, right? Right, they're almighty gods. Gave them divine intervention. You see that? To overcome the natives, man. And they partake in this celebration on the last Thursday of November. So, for those that want to go ahead and follow Bolai, right? The blind leading the blind, you want to go ahead and follow behind and thinking it's cool and thinking it's a day to come together as family. Just know you are partaking in a very sadistic, heinous holiday. In addition to that, you are partaking in idolatry. You're sacrificing unto a devil. All right? You're sacrificing unto a devil. <clears throat> Little do you know. Watch this. This is Psalm 73 and 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. The Lord gave us prophecy in the book of Psalms. Let you know who are they? The Edomites, so-called white man. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They're going to make a very violent, vi very violent, bloody thing into something good and say, let's make it a family day and come together in holy matrimony. And everybody partake in this feast. And we're going to mock all the brown lies that was killed on that day with a turkey. And we're going to put cranberry sauce in the middle of the turkey to represent the bloodshed. All right? And we're going to mock them. And all of you guys are going to partake in it because you know what? We're going to make it a national holiday. Lord in Christ. <clears throat> and our people just going along with it like, hey, man, you know. Hey, let's, let's, let's just make it something good now, you know. It probably did start off as something bad, but you know what? Let's make it something good. No, that's not how it works. You can't reinvent history. You can't change history. All right? You can't do that. That's why the Lord is mad. Deuteronomy 32 and 16, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. Provoked they him to anger. All right? You want to piss off the Most High, the, heaven, the creator of all things. How is his name? They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. Right. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, false gods, not the real God. Right. The real God is Yahweh, the God of the Bible, which our people know nothing about. Because our people don't partake in none of his holy days, but they partake in all of the white man's holidays. All right. I digress. Let's get some more. Let's double back. All right. So look at this face. Andrew Jackson. This is the face of a devil. You ever want to see a devil? Here you go. Right? Live in the flesh. Right here. This is a demon, man. That was manifested on earth. It says, at the beginning of 1830s, nearly 125,000 Native Americans lived on millions of acres of land in Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, North Carolina, and Florida. Land their ancestors had occupied and cultivated for generations. By the end of the decade, very few natives remain anywhere in the southern eastern United States. Working on behalf of the white settlers who wanted to grow cottons on the Indian lands, the federal government forced them to leave their homelands and walk hundreds of miles to a Specially designated Indian territory across the Mississippi River. This difficult and sometimes deadly journey is known as the Trail of Tears. Look, man, y'all can't y'all can't deny this history, man. All right, I don't care what people want to say. Let's make it a good day about family. You know, this is the only time I get off to be able to deal with my family. Do y'all see this bloody history? This encompass embodies Thanksgiving because these white European settlers, as they like to call themselves. I like to call them devils, right? Said they were thankful because they felt like their God intervened and gave them divine intervention and power over the natives to embody and encompass this land, this rich land. And this is where you get the whole expression, God bless America. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see the treachery? Do y'all see the trickery? Do y'all see the, the deceptive nature and mocking us in our face? Man, the Indian removal problem or the Indian problem. It says white Americans, particularly those who lived in or lived on the Western frontier, often feared and resented the Native Americans because we're greater. We're greater people. We're, we're more luxurious. We're more dominant just in our nature. That's how God made us. Right. So we're more superior 
in, in our physical prowess, but nevertheless, because of our lack of knowledge of who we are and lack of knowledge of our Heavenly Father, our power, our real true power, we, 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 we lose battles to people who are less than us because we don't have the spiritual covering and grace of our Father, you know what I mean, our Heavenly Father. And as a result, when we lose the spiritual covering and grace of our Heavenly Father, we're susceptible to anything. Let me go right here. Let me skip down right here. It says the goal of this civilization campaign was to make Native, Native Americans as much like white Americans as possible by encouraging them to convert to Christianity, which is a devil religion. Christianity, which is not in the Bible. Right. When I say devil, I just mean a lie. All right. Don't get bent out of shape and get to go trying to call the Facebook police. All right. It's just it's not it's not it's not in the Bible. You're not gonna find the word Christianity in the Bible. Christ warned us in the book of Matthew and several other places. Matthew 24, 24 to be exact, that there was gonna be false representations of him. Right? Christianity is the antithesis and well the antithesis of the Bible and the uh the uh all, well all on be all of the false Christ, right? It's the image and the uh the philosophy of that it kinda encompasses false Christ. It says, learn to speak and read English, right? Pursuant to the curses in Deuteronomy. European style economic practices, which is treachery, thieving, stealing, robbing, uh, guerrilla warfare, all these different things that the Europeans do, such as the individual ownership of land and other property, including in some instances in the South African slave. So they said, we're going to teach you how to steal. And we're going to teach you how to enslave Africans, too. We're going to teach you how to do that, too, right? So you see some of the tribes right here. Chickasaw, Seminole, Creek, Cherokee, etc., etc. Um, Let me drop down. It says, Indian removal. Andrew Jackson had long been an advocate of what is called Indian removal. As an American, our army general, he had spent years um, leading brutal campaigns against the Creek in Georgia and Alabama and the Seminoles in Florida. So you see, <clears throat> he wasn't a stranger to just, you know, brutally as they use, brutal, brutally campaigning to wipe out the indigenous people of this land and take this land and give it to his white constituents. Ah, oh, this is crazy, man. I mean, this is like a law. I just want to let y'all know that. This is a policy. This is a policy that you can't run from. A part of American bloody history. How do you even fix your lips to say, God bless America? <sighs> Boy. Right? You know what I mean? But if you were being, reading your Bible, you will be on point because the Lord already told us they was going to do this. Book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 25. And through his policy, also he call, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hands. And shall magnify himself in his heart. Right? So through the soap of a pen and a the policy, they have this day, thanks killing, and they changed it into a family day now, right? But it's still rudimentarily and originally, originally is a sadistic, heinous holiday. You cannot go away from it. And if you partake in this day, just know you are partaking in idolatry and the massive murdering of God's chosen people, right? Let's get a bar of this trail of tears real quick, and then, you know, I'm going to end it, man, probably with a couple of scriptures. I just want, you know, not too long, just give y'all a little bit of quick history. The trail of tears, the Indian removal process continued. In 1836, the federal government drove the creeks from their land. From the last time, 3,500 of the 15,000 creeks who set out for Oklahoma did not survive the trip. 15,000, or Salakia, 3,500 people died of the 15,000 creeks that they had removed. The Cherokee people who divided, who were divided, what was the best way to handle the government determination to get its hands on their territory? Some wanted to stay and fight. Others thought it was more problematic to agree to leave in exchange for money and others 
concessions. In 1835, a few self-appointed representatives of the Cherokee Nation negotiated the Treaty of New Ecto, which traded all Cherokee lands east of the Mississippi River for $5 million, relocation of assistance, and compensation for the lost property. To the, govern- to the federal government, the treaty was a done deal, but many of the Cherokees f- felt betrayed. After all, the negotiators did not represent the tribal government or anyone else. So, look, this is what the Bible was telling us about. You can't make a treaty with a devil, man. How you going to deal with a devil when the Lord already told us about that, right? Let me get a couple of scriptures. Twelve can't expect the devil not to be a devil please ask us 12 and 10 it says never trust thy enemy for like as iron rusted so is his wickedness how are you going to trust the devil to be honorable and to be solid when all he shows you is that he's a devil right they're, they're, you can't expect them to be solid when it's not in their nature to be solid um, where is that at? Psalms 25. 25. Is it Psalms? Damn, where is it at? Ah, bear with me, Israel. I got to find this. Pro- Damn, I think it's Proverbs. 20. 26 and 25. Yeah, here we go right here. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Who hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shown before the whole congregation. He's going to eventually show you that he's wicked. He's going to eventually show you that he can't be trusted. You just have to kind of, you know, wait it out and see. You know what I mean? It's, it's eventually going to be declared. Um, Damn, I can't remember the other one in Psalms, man. Y'all got to forgive me. Ah, I can't think of it right now. It said he's speaking lies, though. Let me see. Speaking lies. Let me see if I can find it. Speak it lies. Bear with me, family. I got to find this one. Damn, I'm mad. I can't. I don't remember it. Oh, it's in Psalms, right? Yeah, here we go. Psalm 58. Here we go. No, not this one. Oh, man. Oh, man. I cannot find it. Lord in Christ, I cannot find it. Where is it at? Lord in Christ, man. Ah, it goes something like, oh, basically... He 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 gonna he gonna stab you in your back essentially. You know what I mean? He's gonna stab you in your back. He's gonna come crouching like it's all good, but then he's gonna stab you in your back. You know what I mean? This is just the normal nature of this beast. Nevertheless, I'm gonna go back to Sarah. I can't remember it. It's a Salakia. I apologize. I have a brain for it right now. Um, but y'all get the point. Y'all know. Y'all get the point of who we dealing with, right? Right, you can't expect them to keep their treaties, right? I think that was the key word, treaty. Let me see. He broke all this treaty. Let me see. Treaty. I have to find this. Damn, is it? He broke. He broke all his treaties. Hmm. <sighs> broke all his treaties. Man, hold on, man. I got to find this, man. My bad, y'all. Bear with me. I can't just end this without finding this precept, man. This is a real precept. I have to find it, family. I have to. I have to find it. Bear with me, y'all. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm so mad that I can't remember it. I got to go get my Bible. Bear with me a little bit. I'm going to get a ball right now. You know what I mean? But y'all get the y'all get the gist of what I'm trying to say, right? What I'm trying to articulate is when you're dealing with a devil, you can't trust him. And all you can do is expect him to be a devil. You know what I mean? Expect him to be who he's always been, which is a devil. Right. So long, let me get up see my Bible. 
Let's see right here. Let me see. can't find it. I can't believe this. There's it is in Psalms. Is it Psalms 21? Psalms 58 and 20? Hold on. 55. Lord in Christ, man. Oh, man. Sorry, man. Sorry. Ah, oh, man, I can't believe I forgot this precept. There we go right here. He put it forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. I was looking for the treaty, but, you know, another word for treaty is covenant. He broke all the contracts. He had a peace treaty. He broke it. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Will we just read the uh, the Trelateers, right? So they had a treaty, right? Right here, the treaty of the new Ekata, which traded all Cherokee's lands east of the Mississippi River for four, $5 million. Relocation assist in the compensation for lost properties. But these things did not materialize. <laughs> so on paper, he said, we're going to take care of you. We're going to be good. But nevertheless, none of these things actually materialized. And a lot of people left and um, work, work worser, for lack of a better word, that's not a word, worse predicaments and circumstances than they were prior to this. But nevertheless, they had in law these treaties, which never materialized, which were supposed to. Um, they had several other pre treaties, but they were supposed to kind of, you know, last for generation and generation for the indigenous people. But it didn't happen like that. So the indigenous people try to solve things civilly, but you're dealing with a brute beast who's not civil, who's cruel in his nature. <laughs> so, you know, all in all, man, I just want to give you all a little bit of quick history, man. You partaking in this day. Just know you are partaking. Look, 5,000 miles, man. Lord in Christ. They had these brothers and sisters walking, man. And dying babies, throwing them in the ocean. So look, man. Um, you know, I guess I can end it with this, man. You want to partake in this day? Just know you are partaking in the mass murdering and pillaging and killing of God's chosen people. You also are sacrificing to a devil. Um, because as as we read in um, Lincoln's proclamation, that he felt like it was divine intervention from their Greco-Roman gods who gave them power over the indigenous people to take. This rich land, this rich land, this rich uh, free land, as they like to say. How was it free land? Was people here already? This rich land, and they made it their own. And they got all the gold, cotton, the platinum, the oil, the palladium, the sugar, the strawberries, you know, the beer. All the things that make this place a real, real mineral rich land. These white colonists came and extracted it and took it and pillaged it and um, destroyed the people. That we're here first. So all of this encompasses and kind of embodies Thanksgiving. And if you partake in this, just know you are partaking in everything that comes with this day, which is a devil day. So just want to give you a little backstory history. You know, it's, up on, it's on you. Do what you want. But nevertheless, it's going to be consequences in the end. Trust me. You want to partake in the mockery and, and the laughing stock of, of, of God's chosen people. Just know that you're going to be destroyed for that if you don't repent. Shalom.